In today's video, we're going to be taking a big look at the tropics as we've done over the past few days. We still have so much going on out there in the Atlantic, as you can see. The Pacific has kind of cooled off. Obviously, there may be more threats on the way. Only time we'll truly be able to tell with that. But hopefully, obviously, the West Coast of the United States is not going to be at any risk any further. Now, we're also going to be going over the upcoming pattern overall. So we'll go through all of the storminess, the, the precipitation, the temperature pattern, all of that very, very soon. Before we get into things, be sure to check out our other business, Prestige Weather, where we do weather consulting. We do early access to our seasonal and monthly forecasts and all sorts of other cool stuff within our community that you guys are welcome to check out. It's only five bucks a month. Be sure to sign up today again in the pinned comment and description down below. Now. As we take a look at things, again, we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for Harold, Franklin, and Gert in a little bit, but we're going to take a look at these two risks here. We do have a 20% chance of development here in this code yellow area over the next seven days, a 0% chance over the next 48 hours. So beyond two days from now, that is when the risk arises. So we will be watching very, very closely for that. Our orange area here. We have a 20% chance of development over the next two days, a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. That is what we're looking at there. So this one has a much higher chance of development uh, and only time will tell if this one ends up developing or not, but we're gonna be watching it very, very diligently here on the channel, of course. Let's go ahead and roll through with these cone forecast areas. This one's for Franklin. And as you can see, tropical storm Franklin now is expected to hit the Southern coast there of Dominican Republic cross over the entire island there and then end up on the northern side there in the Caribbean. This one is drawing some concerns for the east coast of the United States and as you can see it's expected to really really slow down here as a tropical storm begin to develop further into a hurricane by 8 a.m. this Sunday and then maybe end up on the western side of Bermuda there which again if it's west of Bermuda that does put it at some risk of ending up in the eastern United States to a certain extent so we will be watching very very closely for that, of course. Now, Tropical Storm Herald, now Tropical Storm. Uh, so we've made it all the way to H so far. We've seen a lot of progress in the Tropical Storm names over the past just couple of days here. We've moved, I think, like four names beyond where we were. So we've seen a big movement there. This one is currently sitting on the coast of Texas and is expected to weaken, obviously, as it moves over land to a tropical depression by 7 p.m. Tuesday, so tonight. And then by 7 a.m. on Wednesday, it'll be a post-tropical depression there in western Texas. So this will be a big rainmaker here. A little bit of a windy storm there for the coast. This should cool off, though, as it eventually moves further and further over land. Now, post-tropical cyclone Gert here is expected to kind of just spin around, spin out, and fizzle out overall here, never really getting above that kind of tropical depression status. It's currently sitting 10 miles per hour under tropical storm status so it is quite far from ever really getting back up to that point while it's not impossible it's not really expected at this point by any means now as we take a look here at our upcoming storminess we're just going to take a look here um, at later this afternoon you can see this tropical cyclone here in southern texas northern mexico again big rainmaker we can see it happening there the remnants of hillary still kind of making themselves known here over the northwest areas in the rockies uh the west in general and then areas up there in canada we can see this bringing a lot of precipitation to these areas but overall between these two we don't really have much going on for the central or the eastern united states now for Wednesday here, uh, on the 23rd, we could see that there is a lot of storminess and it's kind of taking a flow like this. So we see it kind of doing a, it looks kind of like a boomerang, but a horseshoe here around. That is mostly the flow that we're seeing. So we end up having a pretty dry pocket there um, for a lot of our plains, Midwest areas, deeper south. That is what we're taking a look at by Wednesday. As we move on and reach Thursday here on August 24th, we could see some storms sparking up here for a lot of the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast here. Um, more monsoon activity perhaps here for the four corner states as well. Overall quieter outside of those areas once again. Uh, by the time we reach Friday here on the 25th, um, we can see that there is plenty going on here for a lot of, again, the West. So we see this for the, like, the third day in a row, the upper Midwest, and then the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast once again. So a very, very similar flow still by this weekend. 
Saturday, we see things looking, again, pretty similar. I mean, we have it for the four corner states up through some of the plains. It's stretching a little bit further south, especially on the eastern end here by this point. So definitely Saturday looks to be a little bit more stormy. And then Sunday, the 27th here, we could see some thunderstorm activity happening for a lot of areas between the Rockies into the southern plains, some of the deeper south, and then up back through the southeast, mid-Atlantic, and up into the northeast. Here's our tropical concern here, so we'll end up seeing what happens with this. I have not seen this yet, so we'll have to wait and see. By Monday, we can see it is approaching uh, closer to the eastern seaboard as a 995, so a little bit weaker here uh, on the European model than what the National Hurricane Center is saying. That's probably not a hurricane. Uh, we could see for the southeast coast, mid-Atlantic coast, and up into the northeast, we're still seeing a lot of activity. Uh, this does draw very close to the east coast, but what we end up seeing is something like this. So it curves back out to sea, hopefully for good here. Uh, I want to underline this, though. We do have a 994 developing there just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula there in Central America. And that is looking like a pretty rich tropical system, so we need to watch that one very closely. By Wednesday, we see it still intensifying down into the 980s here in the middle of the uh, Gulf of Mexico there. We have some storms sparking up for the southeast. Uh, and then by the time we reach Thursday, we see that hits the panhandle of Florida as perhaps a 980, something like that. So definitely a pretty intense storm um, there for Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. And that's the end of the model run, so we don't get much further than that. But that would obviously bring plenty of precipitation to these areas. And sure enough, we see it here as we take a look at this total precipitation. Some of the areas that I'm just going to circle in for some above average activity, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, here we can see for the Great Lakes back down through the southeast some above average activity something like this and then also down there for southern Texas we see plenty so definitely taking a look at some really really rich activity here especially we would be watching this tropical system that's perhaps going to track into the southeast pretty far out on the model run so we are going to take it with a grain of salt but perhaps if this was to happen uh, we can see very far above average precipitation there for a lot of the southeast now for the temperature pattern, we see things warming, warming, warming. Uh, we do have an, our next big cool down here expected by late this weekend. As you can see for Sunday, we see some cooler air pushing back. We see warm air building in the west, and this is probably what's contributing mostly to this. So the more we see warmth build out west, the more that's going to shove the cold back down on the eastern end. And we do see this kind of continue in that same fashion that I just talked about. We see a really large area here of warmer conditions. And this is just helping a lot of these cooler temps to re kind of just balance out things out to the east there. As we keep going, we see a lot of the same here. Um, and then by September 6th here, which I can't believe we're already talking about that far out, uh, we have perhaps a negative uh, PNA developing and we see this warmth rebalancing. So we see kind of the opposite happening here by the end. Take this with a grain of salt. This is also 360 hours out, but perhaps a warmer pattern for the first week of September. Could be on the horizon we'll be watching it very very closely be sure to subscribe we do upload every single day you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video